It's great to be chatting again with the National Director for Politics for the Australian Christian Lobby, Wendy Francis. How are you, Wendy? Really good, Ricky. Thanks for having me on. Not a problem. The census data is out today. There's a fair bit to go through, but naturally the one that uh, is the question we wanted to ask the Australian Christian Lobby is this declining number of people identifying on the Christian religion and the growth in the no religion answer. What do you say is going on there? Yeah, look, I don't think any of us are surprised by that. We, we In the West, it, you know, we've seen secularism is growing. People are leaving the church and the faith. Um, Australia has become strikingly more godless, and I think we're seeing that in the news every day. So the, the effects are being shown in our own nation. But can I just say, Ricky, that I think the other thing that we need to notice about this is that globally, this is not the case at all. The West are in a minority with the drop in Christianity and in religion overall. Globally, Christianity is massively on the rise. So this is not a a representation of what's happening around the globe, but it certainly is what's happening here in our nation. And I think we're all the poorer for it. Um, What's the, which countries would you be referring to where Christianity is particularly growing rapidly? Particularly in Africa, but in Asia, um, in Europe and North America, that it is it is dropping. But it's particularly in Africa and Asia nations uh, growing enormously. We're talking about you know three percent growth in Africa over the past year. We've got um, you know millions of people coming to faith in Africa and Asia alone. Now you so, t- and you use that term faith, Wendy. Is there a problem yeah. with the question that the census asks? It uses the term religion. Just that word religion switches some people off. Do, I mean, people ticking no religion, does that suggest they have no beliefs or spirituality at all? Not at all. And I think that um, even that, that, com- that question in the census was really uh, quite important too because we still have in this census over 70% of Australians identifying as religious. So we've still got over 70% saying that they are religious. Uh, they are not wanting to actually tick a denomination or particular uh, um, particular sort of brand of faith, I think. Uh, sometimes people actually, uh, you know, sort of shy away from that. But our census has shown we are still a very religious nation. And when you look at the Christianity figures, I forget, I haven't got them right in front of me, but it was somewhere uh, north of 50%, I thought, in there, or maybe I'm wrong. But um, when you look at, say, Islam and Hinduism, they're 3% and 2% respectively. It's still the dominant religion in Australia. Absolutely. So Christianity is now 44%, I think it is. Last census, it was 52%, so it has dropped. Uh, But we're still talking about, you know, if you're walking through a shopping centre, you're still talking about every second person identifies as a Christian. So we're still talking a a very strong representation in Australia of people who have very specifically um, addressed this question because there certainly has been a lot of pressure, particularly from outside groups, of people saying, don't tick religious, don't tick religious, don't tick Christian. And so these people who have ticked Christian, still close to one in two Australians have ticked that. So I think it's still, you know, a strong representation and an indication that Australians are not... Um, abandoning faith, you know, in in hordes. <laughs> yep, it's an interesting one you point out there. But you said there was a campaign for people not to answer this question, but there was actually an increase, according to head of statistician Dr. David Gruen, from ninety one percent up to ninety three percent answering the question about what their religion was. So it does appear people did want to have their say about that one. I don't think people like being told what they can and can't say on the census. So I think it backfires on people when there's these sort of. Um, outside sort of influences and we've seen you know some groups are not happy even with what the census is saying and it just doesn't make sense to me because we've asked people we've asked Australians the question then sure surely we should listen to what they're saying so we've got we've got groups at the moment some of the LGBTI groups who are pushing for the some of the census results not to even be made public because they don't like the answers yeah, that's an interesting one you raise, Wendy, because the um, you know amongst the flurry of press releases from the ABS about the census, that was something that was noticeable in its absence in whatever the answers were about uh, the LGBTIQ plus uh, communities and uh, what they uh, what the identification number is there. Whereas we've got clear pictures, say, on Muslim and Hindu in those demographics, but not on that topic. No, so Ronnie Croom, um, he was speaking on behalf of Just Equal Australia, the lobby group, and he has really been pushing hard for the ABS not to release the figures that show how many Australians chose uh, the new, it was a new um, option that was non-binary. 
So he he doesn't want that to be um, disclosed because uh, they don't believe that enough people will have picked that option for them to get any advantage from the census mm. results. Because well, obviously business and education, they all look at these results. Well, re- reading between the lines, Dr David Grew, an Australian statistician, said the religion question holds a special place in the census. It's one of the few topics that's been in every one of the 18 censuses and the only question that's voluntary. So I imagine that question about non-binary was a mandatory question people had to answer. Well, it was male, female or non-binary. So you needed to choose what gender you identified as. And that was you know, male and female, which are binary um, choices, or non-binary. And so now uh, the ABS spokesperson, I, I read yesterday in the Sydney Morning Herald that the Bureau is saying that they won't include the non-binary count in the first release um, and that they will report on the data for male and female, but they're actually going to withhold that section of the information. And I think that that's just um, it's a, a crazy thing that we've, you know, we're being compromised by a lobby group who are saying that they don't want the answers shown because it might not... They're worried that they might not agree with the results. Well, I, it, I, I think it's a dangerous step. Well, does it become critical in the point that Dr Gruen makes that, for instance, on religious affiliation, it supports local planning for facilities, goods and services for Australian that identify in the religious category, helps them live according to their beliefs. Is the fear there that there might be a reduction in the amount of federal and state expenditure on LGBTIQ issues because it's had a very low census result? That is their concern, and particularly, you know, when you look at education and the huge increase in um, in the curriculum of things pertaining to uh, non-binary sort of uh, curriculum sort of inclusion, they would be concerned. Oh well, if the numbers are very low, that might that might decrease. Let's just look at the truth. Wendy, just while I've got you, I want to just check to in with you about this Roe v. Wade decision in the US. It was a long time coming in a sense that it had been leaked somehow from the US Supreme Court, but we're seeing some civil disorder, not only in America, but even in Perth, I understand some protests underway about changing their laws outside the US consulate regarding uh, abortion or termination of pregnancy. Just what does the ACL see in that result? Does it have any relevance to Australia at all? Look, I think it does have relevance to Australia in as much as the US, for once, is copying us instead of us copying them. Because all they've done is actually removed it from a federal judge um, being able to decide their, you know, what they say about abortion. And it's moved it back into a democratic uh, system where the states and the elected representatives will actually be able to make laws and people will be able to vote in the, the um, legislative representatives that they want and who they believe, um, you know, best represent their their views. And so, you know, it is a landmark decision that's been um, overturned. But, but you know, what we're saying is that all it's done is made it actually more democratic, certainly not less than democratic. So the legal situation in the US now will be similar to Australia. Abortion law will be a state matter and laws will differ from state to state. That's exactly what's happening here. Wendy Francis from the Australian Christian Lobby, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it.